What's up people, Dubs of Wars Despite here, and welcome to my top 10 music tracks in gaming. If you guys want to know what other rules are, well here are the rules. Number 1, no games that have music all the time, meaning no Just Dance, no Rock Band, Guitar Hero, and all that jazz. Number 2, it can be any type of music, so it can easily be opera, rock, heavy metal, anything like that. Number 3, it can only be one song per game name, meaning it could be only one song from a Mario generation, so it could be from Sunshine or anything like that, or one from a Resident Evil game. Number 4, it could be any game system, so I can use the, the NES, the PS4, GameCube, Game Boy, all that lot. Number 5, they have to be in a part of a game or shown in the debut, so I can use trailers, the ending, the beginning, or in the middle of the game. And number six, it has to be the games that I have only played. So no Wii U games, PS4, Xbox One, or the SNES. So anyway, let's get on to the tracks. Let's get on to number ten. Number ten, the gr the Great Mighty Pooh from Conquers Bad Fur Day. Now to be Throughout the stories of my life, I have been trying my hardest to get this game back. I lost it when I was a little kid, but I still remember this game when I was a little kid. So, easy enough said than done, I still remember this song in my head. I actually got it on my iTunes, on my iPod, because it was that fun and to sing. You guys might be thinking this song is not really an actual song. Please tell me this. There's actually a heavy metal band who actually take, took this song out of this game. So it actually is a real song now. And even the words are so fucking funny. I always listen to it and I always sing it in my, when I was in high school. I was like, I am the great mighty fool. I was, how about some scat, you little twat? And I got fucking sent out one day by singing it. But either way, it's an opera song if you want to know. It's a genre, it's a really good song. If, if you guys have never played Conquest by Fur Day, I'll definitely stay to you to definitely play and play it. Load of, load of famous YouTubers have played it already. PewDiePie's done it. Um, oh, um, Nintendo Capri Song's done it from the... Um, with Chuck Conroy and all them lot. But a lot of people have played it. And literally, sad thing though, I would love to get it back so I can play it with you guys one day, but for now, I have to look for it one day. It's too fucking expensive, so I'll let you guys go on to the next part. Let's see what is number 9. <laughs> now that's what I call a bowel movement. Number 9 is Lost Woods from Ocarina of Time. Now, to be, to be Pacific, I am shit at Legend of Zelda. I can't even finish the game in one in one day. I, it take, it'll take me like 10 years to try and finish Ocarina of Time. I have never finished it in my life. But the only thing I look looking forward to when I actually do it again and again and again and try and finish it is the Lost Wood in the Forest. That tune always brings a big massive bright... It brings my... Brings my day back to life listening to this song. Like that old do 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 do. It's brilliant. I've been trying to learn it on a um, on, my, on my harmonica. Can't do it properly, but I'm still trying my hardest. But literally, if you guys never played Legend of Zelda, please go and definitely check it out. And even so, why the hell are you not played Ocarina of Time? It's amazing. And it's plus, it's from the Nintendo 64 again. Once again, fantastic tune, and I'll always be looking forward to listening to it one more time in the near future. Let's get on to number eight. Number 8 is Organization 13 from Kingdom Hearts 2. I know you guys are shocked in the head and may be thinking, am I really actually putting Kingdom Hearts on a low spot? Yes I am. The reason why there's a lot, lot better songs that I actually do adore listening to. It was easily between this from Kingdom Hearts or easily from a Disney game. And definitely I had to put Kingdom Hearts on because it's the king of all Disney, no matter what. Um, Easy, easy to, be, to pronounce the Organization 13 theme, I prefer the darkness of Organization's piano, music and all that lot than the cheerful music from Hollow Bastion to the Underworld to all the other brilliant songs in Kingdom Hearts. And the reason why, because I friggin adore Organization 13. I love all of them. I like Roxas, I like Axel, I like Xehanort. I love them all, they're friggin' brilliant, and hopefully in the near future, I'm gonna own myself on them coats. Definitely, I'm gonna order one when I get older. I can't afford it now, but I will get it very soon. But, why am I actually putting it so low? Well, like I said, there's more better songs than that. But, I just really, really adore 
do adore this song. And if they don't put this game, this song, in number three in Kingdom Hearts 3 in 2014, well, oh my god, somebody is gonna die! Let's get on to number seven. Number seven, Ain't That a Kicking Head by Matthew 2. Once again, I've. Uh, you got shocked again if you guys know what I really do love. And yes, Matthew 2 is actually one of my biggest favourite games in the world. Reason why I love the 1920s, all them kind of years. The Mafia, I freaking adore. They're brilliant. And this song does, does count in as well. Ain't That a Kicking Head by The Rat Pack, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, and um, Sammy Davis Jr. All three of them are amazing singers and musicians if you want to know. This song always blew me away when I finished Matthew 2 and when I when I firstly finished Matthew 2, when I did it years ago when it first came out, I was like, oh I didn't want to finish it, I was a little bit down and then when I heard that song, dun, 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 oh I was jumping about dancing like, like I was back in the 1920s. I love Ain't That Kicking Head and if you guys never heard of that song, well easy enough. You are definitely gonna get a kick in the head. Let's get on to number six. Like the fellow once said, ain't that a kick in the head? Number six, Mewtwo's battle theme from Pokemon X and Y. For big massive news for this one, it was easy between the normal Kento legendary music when you're fighting the normal legendaries in Pokemon. Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow and Green, Green for Japanese, I love that tune and when I played Pokemon White I did not see this coming. When I um, faced Mewtwo and my Moltres, this song, when it, when it first began I was like, okay this is pretty cool, this is funky and when I heard the old classic I was Booming! I love that tune to bits when I was a kid. It's a big massive part of my childhood. I really do love that tune. It takes me way back to my childhood and literally if you guys ever had Pokemon in your life when you were a kid and you went back to it, I am guarantee you, you would have great memories. And this song definitely took me back when I was about, well let me see, five years old when I first played Pokemon. And I'm 17 for God's sake, coming to 18. And it takes me back when I was five years old. Oh man, it takes me way back when I was a little kid. I'm like an old guy right now. And I tell you what, definitely, if you guys are, haven't caught your legendary bird or Mewtwo yet, definitely go and fight them. Because I guarantee you, you guys will love this new remix of the Kento Legendary theme tune. Let's get on to number five. Number five, Kenya West from. Saints Row 3. Okay, I might as well tell you now. I do not know the actual song. I just had to put down Kenya West because that's who sang it. But the 21st century, I think I might as well just call it that now. Um, fantastic tune for Saints Row. I do love Saints Row. I got a bit blasted away from it after I played 2 because I got carried away with other games. And I had the same thing with GTA 5. I'm not even going to play it because I hate it. I really do hate the game. I played a fair bit of it and I completely hate it. But Saints Row still keeps me going playing it. Definitely I'm going to go and get myself Saints Row 4 soon. Still can't afford it, it's Christmas now so I can't do anything yet. But definitely, definitely, definitely Saints Row 3's song, Kenya West 21st Century, is freaking amazing. It was viewed in the trailer from the beginning and I, I don't remember if it was in the game or not, I'm not, I'm not very sure. But because literally all the time I was listening to was Satisfaction in. And um, I need a hero in um, Saints Row 3 because it was so freaking funny. Even I was walking around looking like a toilet and a sex doll. <laughs> but anyhow, yeah, Saints Row 3, Kenya West is absolutely awesome. It definitely fits Saints Row 100% with all the violence, with all the guns, with all the swearing. And plus, it's 21st century. Kenya West is a bit of like a 21st century singer. Well, well actually, he is. Anyhow. Let's get on to number four, because there, there's four biggies that I absolutely adore. Go on, the heart shot. Oh, things are going to kick up now. Blinded by Light by Final Fantasy 13 as my number four. Yes, yes, yes. I had to put Final Fantasy on one of the top lists, 
reason why Final Fantasy 13 is my personal favourite, and this song is BADASS! It had to be between this and the final boss music, but this one ticks the cake. Reason why is throughout the whole entire game when you're into a fight, and this song always kicks up my beat when I want to fight. So if someone wants to have a fight, I have this tuning in my head. That I'm like going for a fucking left hook or something. I feel like having a fight with this song. It's friggin' amazing. Even though it's being played with an orchestra, I still think this song is badass to listen to, and even listen to it whilst you're having a fight. Think about listening to this whilst you're fighting Rocky Balboa or some sort, or using a, or in a fucking samurai sword fight, and you're playing this song, you're fucking slicing things up. But that's all I have to say for it. It's my number four. I'm very sorry that I couldn't give you any real footage about it, because it's um, the fighting is way too loud, and the music's really quiet when you... What, when you're playing the game, but overall, I can still hear it, I think it's badass. Let's get on to number three. Number three, Escape from the City by Sonic Generation. Now, is it for you to say this? I really do love Sonic, and this game, Sonic Generations, is amazing. It's great for its 25th anniversary, was it 25th? I don't remember. But this song took me way back from Sonic Adventures 2, which is my personal favourite Sonic game in the freaking world. And when they got this in a remix, I was mixed, um, I was mixed, um, talking about it, because I was not sure if it worked. So when I heard the old one from Sonic Adventures 2, and I played this one, I was happy. So all the way through it, I was happy. Throughout, great songs, and I do love Sonic Generation. Let's get on to number two. Number two, carry on from Call of Duty Black Ops 2. For all on my Call of Duty dreams within, from the beginning when Call of Duty first started, like way at the beginning of the year 2000, probably a bit late, later, this song at the end of Call of Duty Black Ops 2 was phenomenal. Easy enough, the band, which was called um, Avenged Sevenfold, great rock band, almost heavy metal, probably a scream as well. They're just fantastic, easy enough said and done. The um, band fit well within Call of Duty Zombies. Listening to this and playing Call of Duty, Zo Call of Duty Zombies is friggin' amazing. So if you guys have never done it, you should definitely do it. But easy enough said and done. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 had a great deal with these guys and they actually did pull it off. I was not sure when I heard the tune and when I watched this in real life, when I finished the game, oh my god, it was amazing. If you guys have never finished Call of Duty Black Ops 2, you should definitely finish it because it's a great story, great campaign, and just get off multiplayer because I'm getting sick and tired of it. Let's get on to our winner. For gold, it's number one. Number one. Who do you voodoo bitch by from Dead Island? A lot of people around the world have been really commenting really bad on Dead Island. I know why, because the characteristics are really bad, the story is really shit, the acting is kind of atrocious. But for me, I actually really do like it. The reason why, because I actually do like the actors, they're pretty funny as hell. Even though they really are shit at acting, I think it fits really well with this kind of thing. Because literally, you've got a guy who's a pisshead, you got a rapper, you got a... Australian black police woman, and then you got an Asian hotel manager. Overall, I think it's pretty good because they all don't know what the fuck is doing, and this song is absolutely amazing. Who do you really bitch? I think it's one of the most amazing songs I have ever listened to. And I actually own it on my iPod. It's that really good. Even my mum actually really loves the song. While, whilst me and my mum are driving in the car to go traffic center in Manchester or even to Berry College, we're turning this tune up full blast in the morning and night. It's like, who? Do your voodoo, bitch! It's that good. And if you guys don't really think so, please tell me what's your top 10 favourite music Sir, looks like tracks you've had in enough. gaming. And plus, comment number? below on it. Please like I'll on this sure video. Please subscribe. And we'll see you guys for another top 10. Or slash top 5. See you guys then. Who do your voodoo, bitch? Excuse me, lady.